Are you sure it's going to go yeah, to us up? The next one. I think it's coming right at us. Yeah, it's probably coming right at us. Make sure my data's uploaded. I can put it up real quick and just see. Let, okay. me, let me put it up and see, see if right, I can see anything. Like yep. Good morning, everybody. This is a live emergency briefing as the Storm Prediction Center has just issued a slight risk from far northeastern Texas through the Arkotex into central Arkansas. A warm front is expected to lift rapidly through east Texas into central Arkansas Monday night, and that's going to be ahead of a shortwave trough. A 50 knot low level jet is expected to develop from northeast Texas through the Arklatex into central Arkansas. And the 12Z NAM is coming out right now. So that's what you're looking at. That's the forecast for 18Z on Monday, which is actually showing a slightly faster wave acceleration of that low level jet with 50 knots. So I do think that the uh, threat of even a daytime severe weather supercell threat uh, with tornadoes appears possible on monday night here you can see that low level jet axis and this is by midday monday so already you have a 50 knot low level jet pumping northward that's going to help to advance that warm front through the arklatex and eventually through central arkansas as well uh, really quickly you can see this supercell composite starting to increase along the i-20 corridor uh, ahead of that advancing warm front and to the south of it here is a short wave trough and that jet streak a little bit faster between last night and this morning uh, in the nam here is the jet streak this is associated with a large-scale trough negative pna pattern large-scale trough across the western u.s ridge across the east big area big anti-cyclone off the southeastern u.s and the, uh, across the gulf of mexico Looks like in general, in the long range, these systems are going to be shearing out over top that ridge. It's going to dominate, and I don't think we're going to transition into this crazy active severe weather pattern, but we very much, very easily could as well. So I want to show you the surface base cape here, and let's monitor the advance of this warm front. Even noses in to southeastern uh, Oklahoma at 21Z. I'm wondering if there is an outside chance of a supercell developing just before sunset, right in the nose of this instability, possibly in far northeastern Texas. But it does look like it's more likely going to be uh, an after dark type of a situation. Decent wind shear, though, 200 plus, 250 plus, zero to one kilometer shear, maximized near the Arklatex and into central Arkansas. Decent dew points will be lifting northward as well, mid 60s. So possibly on the nose of this moisture down into northeastern Texas, maybe an outside chance of the development of a supercell storm right at sunset. Uh, but I do think more than likely it's going to be a nocturnal event. You can see this capping inversion that's in place. That should suppress storms during most of the daylight hours. But then as that warm front lifts off to the north, the low-level jet accelerates even more. Persistent convergence along that warm front as it lifts through the Arklatex into central Arkansas. That's when I think that the biggest threat of supercells and maybe even a tornado could be possible. Decent cape available to these storms, uh, about a thousand cape or so on the nose of that those mid 60s dew points for this time of year. But again, that low level wind shear in excess of 300, even despite this little loop of a negative contribution of storm relative helicity above about two to three kilometers, you still have some decent low level shear that will be available to these storms and plenty of bulk shear. But look at the directional shear as you go from a due southerly wind at the surface to a west-southwesterly wind in the mid-levels of the atmosphere above six kilometers. That's definitely one of the strengths of this setup uh, is the directional shear. And then there you can see that moisture nosing into southeastern Oklahoma. This is a new 12Z model run that is coming out. 
We can take a look at the three kilometer NAM, see if it has any convection. And it does seem to be increasing the dew points. And uh, it's uh, increasing the dew points from last night to this morning's run of the NAM. Makes me think that maybe there's an outside chance at about 6, 7 p.m. for initiation near the Arclitex, but it is looking more like a nocturnal type of a setup of severe weather. Probably elevated supercells, maybe some hail producers developing close to midnight. But the models right now are showing not the most widespread of a threat. But look at that, warm front lifts all the way north now, even into southwestern Arkansas, excuse me, southwestern Missouri in the latest NAM by midnight. And then that warm sector lifts all the way through the Ozarks into southern Arkansas, southwestern Arkansas as well, so, southwestern Missouri, excuse me. Decent hodographs up there. And look at that elevated mix layer as well, a dry pocket of air around three kilometers. Does look like these are going to be elevated uh, supercells uh, just to the north or just above that capping inversion, nocturnal inversion that still will be in place. But usually when you get this dry slot coming in at about three kilometers in the mid levels of the atmosphere, it'll help to steepen those lapse rates. It is starting to look a bit like a hail event. And here is your hodograph. Uh, obviously, it is supportive of tornadoes if you can have a surface based storm. But oftentimes, these slightly elevated storms above that capping inversion, the red line there, that's the temperature. You can see it increases just above the ground. That's an inversion or a layer where the temperature will increase. A bit of a stable layer there that will either need to be overcome by surface-based storm or the convection could be based just above that inversion. And you do have that dry pocket of air right above three kilometers. And all this directional shear as well above that could certainly favor a hail threat across eastern Oklahoma. Even the Ozarks of northwestern Arkansas could be in play for that. There's a NAM hinting at some of that elevated convection developing. Looks like late night Monday night into the morning hours on Monday, that severe weather threat could maximize. It's not looking like a very robust severe weather threat right now in the forecast models. Looks like the timing isn't quite right, a nocturnal event. Zooming out a little bit to look at the larger scale pattern. So this is your negative PNA, western US trough, eastern US ridge. Here's your anti-cyclone dominating southern Gulf of Mexico and off the southeastern US. This is the jet streak that's going to be responsible for this system. A little bit of a short wave trough embedded out ahead of the parent trough diving south through the western U.S. I think that this is the pattern that we're going to see play out during this spring. With that warm water across the north central Pacific, cold uh, PDO horseshoe around it, should encourage the formation of this western U.S. trough to the east of the ridge in the central Pacific. Here's your jet streak shearing out over top this anti-cyclone dominating the Gulf of Mexico but also helping to preserve those dew points down in the Gulf. You can see that reservoir of 70 plus dew points feeding this system, very quick recovery after the last one. The last system that ejected off to the Northeast that brought the elevated mixed layer across the Ohio River Valley, whereas the instability axis was down across Mississippi. We were looking at some of those soundings across Western Tennessee, where you had a much shallower critical angle, but a more robust elevated mixed layer just above the ground but the instability axis never made it up to Western Tennessee. And then we were looking at those forecast soundings across Mississippi, very favorable wind shear and kinematics, plenty of directional shear or that those due southerly surface winds going up to more of a west southwesterly wind aloft. However, uh, no elevated mix layer was present uh, as that system rapidly sheared out upon exiting the southeastern Great Plains across the Ohio River Valley. And that allowed for the development of numerous storms and a tightly packed cluster of those prefrontal confluence lines that led to cell interactions as well. But you may have noticed that once a, a, an individual storm was able to clear out a clean pocket of inflow, then it would quickly start to go through the motions and uh, start to go tornadic. We did have about four to five tornadoes uh, reported from February 17 preliminary, uh, but the damage survey teams are still out there. Just saw a report of some damage even in Macon, Mississippi that must have been from that supercell behind the one that we launched in. But timing needs to be perfect 
uh, to get those really large scale tornado outbreaks, even if the elevated mix layer does eject off to the north and you have a little bit more of a subtle dry pocket above three kilometers over top that moisture, it could still be just enough of a tipping point to encourage numerous tornado producing storms moving into a very favorable kinematic environment. So that's what I mean when I say that I try to hedge toward forecasting ceilings and worst case scenarios across the warm sector. It doesn't mean that that's going to happen across the entire warm sector or across every single point uh, within the Mid-South. But it does mean that if storms are capable of moving into that environment supportive of big problems, then big problems can certainly happen across isolated areas within that warm sector, achieving that ceiling forecast. So a lot of times I'll define those ceilings based on kinematics and also sufficient thermodynamics, uh, but you also have to realize that there are some forecast failures, like a more rapidly shearing out system across ejection of the southeastern Great Plains, but still it can result in big problems for those isolated areas across the Mid-South. This event on Monday night, I don't think it's going to be as substantial as the February 15 event. Uh, it does look like more of an elevated hail producer uh, across central Arkansas, across the mountains of uh, eastern Oklahoma, as well as that cold pocket of air. There's that little shearing out vort. This is the main system diving off to the south. Let's step forward about 24 hours. Look at this bowling ball starting to dive south across the western U.S., We'll have to see what happens if this anti-cyclone over the Gulf of Mexico that's going to preserve that reservoir of deep dew points for late February into March, helping to fuel this, these severe weather events. Will this system dive south and try to bear a lot of the plains and cause more severe weather, or will it shear out over top this uh, strong anti-cyclone that I think is going to be crucial to maintaining that deeper moisture across the Gulf of Mexico? There's Tuesday. Looks like a rainmaking event is going to transpire across portions of the Mid-South, Central Arkansas, and the uh, Central Mississippi River Valley. Could certainly get kind of a rain, prolonged rain event across that area. Might help to expose some of those crystal points across Arkansas, well known for those quartz crystals. Also looks like a uh, Colorado upslope event could begin Monday evening. Lee cyclogenesis here across eastern Colorado. Doesn't look like that big of an event. Oh, there it comes. My plan is to be heading west toward Oklahoma right now. Does look like maybe a couple inches along the Colorado front range here, according to the NAM. Uh, heavier snowfall totals across the mountains of Colorado, Summit County out there. Those ski resorts across the mountains of Colorado could certainly get some more snow with this event. Well, let's take a look at some of these soundings down into Arkansas as that warm front is going to advance. And again, we're just looking at the NAM model here. Definitely once we get within the, the range of the convective allowing models, we're probably going to see some slightly warmer surface temperatures. Let's look further south into central Texas, a little bit closer to College Station. You definitely do have a robust capping inversion on this one. This is at about, this is valid at 0Z. So this is about 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Still that capping inversion holding 68 over 67. Definitely a clear pocket of air also uh, centered around three kilometers. Uh, looks like a cloud layer as well that should help to suppress surface heating a little bit. But if we can get these temperatures well into the 70s, and it does look like that cap will have potential to break. Sounding is supportive. Uh, uh, Hodograph is supportive of an isolated tornado threat. Despite this little loop of a negative SRH, you really want to focus on the lowest kilometer or two in that environment. You can see your one kilometer wind south-southwest at about 50 knots ahead of that jet streak. So a little bit of vorticity of action aloft, aloft and a little bit faster timing with that jet streak, I think could result in the potential for daytime initiation of storms. We can look at the zero to one kilometer EHI, energy helicity index, which is a composite index that factors in surface base instability, as well as zero to one kilometer storm relative helicity, showing you the nose of that very favorable environment nosing into the architects. We can look at a forecast sounding there as well. 
Still though, that capping inversion is likely going to uh, prevent the development of supercell storms during the daytime if you're uh, basing it on the medium range forecast models, which do have a little bit of a cold bias with those surface temperatures this time of the year. Could certainly be into the 70s with just a little bit of surface heating near the Arklatex and then uh, surface space storms will be able to cat tap in to that instability. Maybe could get some near the I-20 corridor well to the east of Dallas. Looks like possibly you could have a slightly higher chance of breaking that cap, especially if you can get 71, 72 degree temperature. The convective temperature is 77 degrees on this sounding, so you are gonna have to warm well into the 70s to get a daytime storm, especially with minimal surface convergence. This is gonna be one where some bubblers are happening near sunset, continue to bubble, and then eventually might become surface-based. Just no convergence, no surface convergence here at zero Z to fire those storms. You're just gonna to have to find a little bit of a confluence line, maybe as a, that warm front lifts off to the north through the Arklatex right in the nose of that moisture. That's why it's definitely gonna be more of a late night event fueled by that low level jet. It's not seeing a ton of surface convergence there across the open warm sector. Definitely going to be more of a bubbler. But favorable EHI is lifting up through eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas. The hills could easily be out into eastern Oklahoma now, it looks like, during this event. But still, that capping inversion is going to probably preclude the development of surface based storms. And these are probably going to be more of the elevated variety of storms. But with some hail potential, given this dry pocket of air, this elevated mixed layer, helping to steep those lapse rates, basically, basically the rate at which temperature decreases with height in this atmosphere, if it's associated with these little dry pockets above three kilometers and in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, it can help to steepen those lapse rates or increase the rate at which temperature decreases with height. The dashed line is the parcel temperature, basically an infinitesimal hot air balloon that's lifting up given the surface thermodynamics, surface temperatures near 70. It'll hit that capping inversion and likely sink back down. So you can see that that hot air balloon with the dashed line, if it's to the right of the red temperature line, then that hot air balloon is warmer than its surrounding environment and it continues to rise, eventually hitting that capping inversion and then dropping back to the ground. If it's able to breach the capping inversion, then it'll continue to rise, fueling off those steep lapse rates uh, being warmer than the surrounding environment, warmer than that red line, the temperature around that hot air balloon, and then it'll continue to rise all the way up to the equilibrium level, the very top of the sounding, once the temperature becomes equal to the uh, temperature of the surrounding environment, that's generally the top of the storms, unless they have enough momentum, and then it can develop an overshooting top above that equilibrium la layer, and that's as that convection is poking up into the stratosphere just above the tropopause. Very favorable critical angles near 60 degrees. That's that angle between the storm motion vector and your zero to one kilometer, roughly your zero to one kilometer shear vector. A lot of directional shear available to these storms, given the shape of this trough rapidly shearing out. So this is looking like a hail event, maybe the first hail event of the season across eastern Oklahoma and western Arkansas. Maybe an isolated tornado though especially if uh, those, uh, there are some breaks in the clouds and you can reach that convective temperature into the mid to upper 70s down into far northeastern Texas, maybe through the Arklatex and into western Oklahoma. Still that capping inversion, that's why you're not seeing a ton of storms that are developing within this environment. But a very favorable hodograph, especially in the lowest two kilometers, with that low level jet lifting above 50 knots out of the south southwest, surface wind out of the due south at about 12 knots, creating quite a bit of low level shear. This is at 10 p.m. across southeastern Oklahoma, basically showing you that favorable environment of surface base instability and low level shear concentrated over eastern Oklahoma into western Arkansas. So overall, I think this looks like a lower end event and a nocturnal event on Monday evening, maybe developing as early as sunset, especially for those surface temperatures are a little bit warmer into the mid to upper 70s across northeastern Texas. 
I do think that there is a threat of those late night hailstorms. You know, those late night videos in the early spring with sporadic golf balls falling from an elevated mesocyclone across eastern Oklahoma into western Arkansas, maybe Fort Smith, uh, back toward Henrietta, down toward Poto, Broken Bow, maybe up toward Little Rock as well, up toward Fayetteville and the, uh, the Ozark. Certainly the new models are favoring a more rapidly ejecting warm front during the overnight hours, late night, Monday night, into the early morning hours on Tuesday. So it's possible that there could even be elevated hailers uh, in northwestern Arkansas and into the Ozarks of southern Missouri uh, by the early morning hours on Tuesday. So I'm going to continue to track this. Uh, I am in the area. I'm heading back toward Oklahoma and uh, definitely going to be activating storm chase mode, even if this is more of a nocturnal event on Monday night. Thank you for tuning in to my weather reports. Thank you, everybody. Never stop chasing.